long-stemmed with an elaborately carved stone bowl. This is a native North American pipe. Historically, it was reserved for special occasions, such as the signing of peace treaties, which is why European settlers called it the peace pipe. Native legend has it that the mystical buffalo calf woman gave native people the first sacred pipe. It's believed to have spiritual powers. The wisps of smoke from the stone bowl are seen as prayers rising to the creator. The pipe maker starts with wood like ash or sumac. These species are soft at the core, so they can easily be hollowed out with the red hot tip of a thin piece of metal. He plunges the smoking hot wire into the soft core of the wood and it quickly burns through creating the passageway through which tobacco smoke can be drawn. Now with a plane, he shaves off the tree bark and shapes the outside of the wood, creating a smooth, slim stem. For effect, he carves decorative angled swirls into the wood with a rasp. He then whittles one end of the stem to transform it for attaching the pipe bowl. He now confirms the diameter is right by checking it against the template. Sanding is now required between the swirls to smooth away gouges left by the rasp. He files a notch into the stem just below the swirls. The beading artist wraps fringe leather around the notch and places a brightly colored accent piece on top. She strings glass beads around the leather wrap notch, working with a pattern and color scheme in mind. Years ago, Native Americans obtained beads through trade with European settlers and threaded them onto pieces of animal sinew using a needle made of bone. The colors of these beads can really make a statement. A string of red might signify vibrancy and long life, while mixing colors could represent a spiritual burst of energy. The pipe stem is now complete and ready for the stone bowl. For that they mine red clay rock, called pipestone. Pipestone is soft and this means it's easy to carve. It's also smooth and takes a high polish. He splashes water onto a chunk to make any flaws more apparent as he evaluates it for carving. With his selection made, he now begins to trace a basic template of a pipe bowl onto the chunk. He saws through the stone along the penciled lines using just a hacksaw. The rock is fairly easy to cut. It's essentially compressed clay. Now nicely contoured, the stone is really starting to look like a pipe bowl. With a series of finer tools, he flattens one end and then sculpts the shape of an eagle head onto it. He wields a rotary tool with a fine bit to carve eyes and feathers. Traditionally, natives use sharp flint or bone to engrave details. He now drills into the stone to hollow out the shank and the actual tobacco bowl. For early natives, this job was very labor-intensive. They gouged out the stone with an arrowhead attached to a stick. He rinses the eagle pipe bowl and then sands it while wet for an even smoother finish. He uses a blowtorch to heat the stone. Once hot, it readily absorbs beeswax as he rubs it into the pores. Beeswax gives the pipe stone bowl a nice satin sheen. After a dip in cool water to solidify the wax, he scratches away some of it along the detail work, including the eyes and feathers. This adds definition and contrast. After a bit of tinkering, the wooden pipe stem fits snugly into the stone shank. He peers down the pipe to confirm that the stem is perfectly aligned with the bowl. This sacred pipe is now ready for any special occasion. They've used a combination of traditional techniques and modern power tools to produce this pipe, reconciling the ancient and new in perfect harmony. I'll smoke to that.